All right, so we've looked at text content. Let's see if we can get an image on our web page here. Um, so image elements, first we need an image. So obviously you can take your own pictures, right, and save the, uh, the image into your image folder here, part of your project folder. Um, you can go to Google Images, right, search online. There's some websites that are specifically for, you know, free stock photos and stuff like that. Pexels and Unsplash are two that I've heard of. Um, so yeah, and then once you have your image, you save it into your project folder, right, into that IMG folder, or you can call it a folder, whatever you want. Um, and then we can use an image element. Um, now, so far, all of our elements have had that format opening tag, um, content, and then closing tag, right? Opening tag, content, closing tag. Opening tag, content, closing tag. Opening tag, content, closing tag, right? And then inside of that are other elements. Anyway, images are self-closing elements. There, there's no real content for us to type, um, but we use the um, source width and height attributes. So we can give um, elements attributes that go inside of the opening tag, and those attributes can specify certain properties of the element. Okay, so we'll we'll see that. But let's let's get an image first. So for that, I want to maximize this and go to a new tab here. So I could just do a search for PBNJ sandwich and say, hey, Google, let's go to Google Images and try to find one of these images here. Um, now, again, in terms of copyright and stuff, I think if you go to tools, yeah, usage rights, um, commercial, we want Creative Commons, which is the free stuff. And then you can choose from the free ones here. If you are using um, Google Images, one hint, like these, this is just called a thumbnail. If you click on this, it gives you this little preview. You actually, you don't want to save this image. You want to right click, go open image in new tab, and then go to that new tab. Go to that new tab. Hello, oh, I got some weird, there we go. And inside of this new tab, you can then right click and say save image as. Okay, otherwise it often doesn't work properly because you're actually saving like the, the thumbnail, the preview image that's over here. Okay, all right. So anyway, let's show the, the other websites. I'm going to go to um, Pexels maybe, right? Free stock photos and videos and we could go P, uh, PBNJ sandwich, if I spell it right. See what it gets me. Lots of sandwiches, but not. Oh, this one has some options. So these are sponsored ones. I think they have paid stuff you can get too. Okay, let's not try pixels. Let's go to uh, what was the other one? Unsplash. And here too, we'll go PB and J sandwich. Maybe I should just search PB. I think the sandwich is throwing it off. Maybe. Yeah, let's get rid of. Or maybe I should do the whole word peanut butter and jelly. Oh, this gives me something at least. Not very many options. Let's try peanut butter and jelly. See if that gives me more. Oh, there we go. Anyway, so there's some options here. Let me try that on the other website as well. I'm going to copy that. Open a new tab. See, I got this. You guys probably can't see it, but my editor is adding like an invisible little editing tag that makes me not be able to click. It's annoying. Okay, anyway, I won't complain. Let's search peanut butter and jelly. Okay, that's... God, those are the, the promo ones again. Okay, not great. Anyway, so either the Google one or I'm actually kind of liking this one here on the little board and stuff. Shows kind of the process. Goes with our instructions about one buttering, peanut butter one side, jelly on the other side. Sure. So I can click on this one, I think. The download free over here, we can choose different sizes. Let's just take the small one. And it should automatically download, awesome. Now it often has a weird name to it. So I will, um, well there's a couple things we can do here. One of the easiest things actually is to just go back to Visual Studio Code and, sorry, go, no, forget it, sorry. I had an idea, it's not working. We're going to, on this little arrow, go show in folder. And it shows up in our downloads folder. And I, I'd like to rename this um, PBJ 
um, sandwich.jpg. All right. And then what I want to do is I want to put this into my project folder. So a couple ways I could do that. I could um, go right click and hit cut or control X. Okay, let's do that cut. And then I can go to my PB and J image folder right here, right click and then paste. Yay. And now let's minimize this. Put it beside again, go back to PB and J. And now if I go here and click on that, it should be inside of it. And there's my, my preview of the image. Cool. Okay. Another way to do it is to actually just go straight from, from the, the wind file explorer and just drag it into the image there and it makes a copy of it. Okay. So that's another way to do it too. Anyway, we don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore. Okay. So now how do we actually insert the image? Well, let's do it right under our H1. And we go IMG, and I'll use that image abbreviation again. And look, it's even giving me these attributes, right? So SRC stands for source. And that's basically us saying, where is the, where is the source of this image located, right? So the image is called, now this is a common mistake. People will go PBJ sandwich.jpg. And then this alt attribute is basically, if there's a problem loading the image, It'll display this text as well. Um, if there are people who are blind, a screen reader could read the text that's in here. So we'll type peanut butter and jelly sandwich as a description. So if I save this now, you'll see it shows this little broken image icon and the alternative text that I gave it. All right. And that's because um, the web page can't find this image. And this is our index.html. And if you look at index.html, it's looking for this file in the current folder. And there is no file called pbj sandwich.jpg in this folder. I need to tell it to look inside of the img folder to get this file. So to do that in the source, we have to go the name of the folder and then a forward slash. And see now recognizes, hey, you want that, that image there. We hit save and now the image loads on the page. Okay. And notice when I hit save, prettier added this slash at the end, right? Cause there's, there's no opening tag or closing tag, right? I don't have to go a slash IM slash IMG. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't exist. There, there's no need to put text content, right? We have the source attribute attribute and the alt attribute that, that give us the image. Okay. Um, we can also add other attributes. We can give it a width attribute and the default unit is pixels. So we could go like 400. You can do PX if you want for pixels, but I think the default is pixels. So if you did 400, it would give that width. And you can also control the height. If you don't give it a height, it'll just automatically scale or it'll keep the ratio. I could go height of 100 or something like that. And then it gets distorted, right? So I don't. And notice what uh, Prettier did, right? As soon as I saved it, it said, wow, this image tag has lots of attributes and it just decided to list one attribute per line. But anyway, let's get rid of the height, hit save, and yeah, that's good. So that's how you can load images, right? Download the images, get those images into your little folder here, and then do this image element where we have that source attribute, the alt, and you can control the width here too. You can also control the width in the style sheet when we learn about that. But this is kind of a handy way to control with as well. All right, that's it. Hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.